Hello, and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the fourth in a 10-part video series in which we're exploring how to build a vCenter orchestrator environment on top of VMware Fusion. In the previous video, we saw how to build a DNS server which can be used in conjunction with this environment. In this video, we'll be seeing how to build the first of our two virtual ESXi hosts. You can see displayed on the screen the steps that we're going to go through in order to install our first virtual ESXi host. And as you can see, there's a number of different steps, but the actual installation process is pretty straightforward. So let's just jump straight into the, the demonstration itself. So the first thing I've done is I've started VMware Fusion and I'm in the new virtual, excuse me, I'm in the virtual machine library window. You can get there by going to window virtual machine library. And in here you can see I already have a Windows 7 VM, which is actually currently powered off. I don't need that Windows 7 VM to do what we're about to do. Now I'm about to create two virtual machines. In this video I'll create the first virtual machine for the first virtualized ESXi host. In the next video I'll create the other. In order to be able to organize those two virtual machines and keep them organized and separate from this Windows VM, I'm going to create a folder. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to create a folder called vSphere 5.5 update 1a so that I can put my two, my two uh, virtualized ESXi hosts in there. Now the folder that we just created is not a folder in the file system, but rather this is just a folder here within VMware Fusion that I can use to organize my virtual machines. So the next thing that I'm going to do is go to the Add button. If you click the down arrow, you'll notice that you have a number of choices. We're going to choose New. And on the installation method selection screen, we're going to choose menu, excuse me, more options. And on the following screen, we're going to choose to create a custom virtual machine. And then we'll click the continue button. On the choose operating system screen, we need to select which operating system we plan to install in the guest operating in, into the virtual machine. In this case, it's going to be ESXi 5, which is already selected, so we'll click continue. Then on this screen, we're going to choose to create a new virtual disk. Then click Continue. Uh, notice just before we do that the, the capacity of this disk by default is 40 gigabytes. We'll click Continue. And on this screen, we can see a summary of what we're just about to create. We're going to create a, a virtual machine that has ESXi 5 in it with a 40 gigabyte virtual disk, 4 gigabytes of memory, and so on and so forth. But on this screen, what we want to do is click the Customize Settings button, because there are some settings that we need to set up in this particular virtual machine. So we click the Customize Settings button, and here, uh, first of all, notice that I'm already in the Documents folder. I've already created a folder called Virtual Machines, and I'm going to create within there a folder called vSphere 5.5 Update 1A. This folder is being created in the file system. I'll click Create. The reason why I'm creating that is so that here in the file system I can organize my two uh, ESXi hosts. So, and for each of those I'm going to create a subfolder, so I'll type new folder. The name of the first folder is going to be ESXi 5.5U1, short for update 1. The first one's going to be a machine called host1, so I'll create a folder with the same name. I'm copying that name because I plan to, in just a moment here, do the same thing for the second host. So host2 and click create. Now I don't need for this video I don't need this host2 folder but I will be using that later. Here in the, let me work my way backwards, in documents, virtual machines, vSphere 5.5 update 1a, I'm create in the folder I created called ESXi 5.5 u1 host1, I'm going to create a virtual machine and I'm going to call that virtual machine I could call it different things, but my naming scheme is ESXi 5.5 U1 Host 1. So we'll click Save. At this point, we're taking into the Settings Customization Wizard, and in here, if we go to Processors and Memory, we can see that we're going to end up with a two virtual CPU host equipped with four gigabytes of memory which is great. That's exactly what we said in a previous video that we wanted. I'll click the Show All button to go backwards. If we go to the Hard Drive section, 
we see that I'm going to end up with a 40 gigabyte virtual disk and I'm going to double check here by clicking on the triangle by advanced options. I'm double clicking to make certain that pre-allocate disk space is unchecked. Unchecking pre-allocate disk space will result in a thin provision virtual disk. So that looks good too. I'm then going to go to the network adapter section to confirm which network I'm plugged into. This machine is going to be plugged into the share with my Mac network. And I'm also double checking that that NIC is enabled. It's turned on. I'll click show all once again. And the really important thing that I need to do here is go to the CD-ROM. I need to make certain that it's enabled. And I need to browse to the ISO file that contains the ESXi installation image, which I've stored in my documents folder. I have a folder called virtual machines and there I have a folder called ISOs and there I have a folder called vSphere 5.5 update 1a and it's in that folder I'm storing the different installation media for the different things I'm installing such as ESXi and here is my installation ISO. So I select the installation ISO and I'm now ready to power on this virtual machine. Actually I need to close this customization wizard and now I can power on this virtual machine. Let me scoot things around, click the power on button, and then we just sit back for a little bit while we watch the machine boot. Now, I could just wait here, but I'm gonna hit enter to select the ESXi image. And now we will wait for the ESXi installer to boot. Notice at this point in the installation that a warning message has popped up informing us that this virtual ESXi host is attempting to monitor all the traffic on it, the network it's plugged into. In other words, it's going to promiscuous mode. Now we can actually change that in the configuration of the virtual machine, but it seems like a useful thing for the ESXi host to be able to do. So I'm going to allow that to occur by typing my administrator password for uh, my, excuse me, my user password for my MacBook Pro. And that's not the password. Let's try it one more time. Okay, as you can see, the ESXi installer is up and running. Uh, one quick note, you'll notice um, the, the mouse cursor here. The installer and the direct console user interface, both of those are text-based utilities, um, and therefore the mouse doesn't play any role in using those. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to scoot the mouse outside of this window. Um, however, the one thing to know about the mouse is that if ever you're trying to type into the installer or you're trying to type into the DCUI and you can't see your characters, you just simply have to click in the window, as I just did, and that will give this window keyboard focus. You probably already know that, but just in case there's a listener out there that doesn't know, click in the window to give it keyboard focus. So the installer is informing us here on this screen that uh, we can hit enter to continue. It's also talking about the hardware compatibility list. If you've never seen that, go take a look. But we're just going to hit enter here. And on this screen, we can see the end user license agreement. So we go reading through the license. We memorize it. There's going to be a test on this later. Just kidding, of course. Uh, we'll just simply hit function key one. So by the way, this is the first time I'm having to hit a function key in uh, this video series. If you're not already familiar on your Mac, if you just hit the F11 key, that's not going to be function key one. You have to hit the FN key in the lower left-hand corner and then hit F1. It's kind of like a shift key. So uh, press and hold down the FN key and then type F11. Forgive me for those of you who already knew about that. Again, I don't know who all the audience members are, so we just want to make certain we cover all our bases. Here on this screen, we're supposed to select which disk we want to install ESXi onto. And as you can see, I only have the one virtual disk, that 40 gigabyte thin provision virtual disk that we saw earlier. So I'm just going to simply click, excuse me, I'm going to hit the enter key here. I'll select my keyboard type. Uh, I'm here in the US, so the default choice is fine for me. I'll click enter. And now I need to assign a password. Now the password I'm going to assign here is capital V, capital M, 
W A R E one bang. Again, capital V, capital M, W A R E one bang. Uh, that password is of sufficient complexity that the ESXi installer is going to be happy. Uh, actually, I don't have to have it be that complicated for the ESXi installer, but the VCO server that we'll be installing later on uh, does require a password at least that complex. So in order to have the same password in all the different places we're going to be um, setting up passwords. I'm intentionally choosing that password. Okay, so I've typed the password once. I've typed it twice to confirm it. I'll hit enter to continue. And the installer goes out to scan and see what it finds. As you can see, the, ins the scan is complete, and now the installer is confirming whether or not we want to actually install ESXi. So once again, I'll type F11 to install ESXi. And as you can see, a short time later, ESXi is completely installed. To continue onwards, I'll hit Enter to reboot. So the installer is going to shut down here, the virtual ESXi host is going to boot up, and what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to go and do a, a tiny bit of configuration because the issue right now is that the, the ESXi installation that we just performed by default configures the host to get its IP address set via DHCP. And that's not actually what we want for this particular host. Now, I discussed it at length in a previous video, um, why we're going to be using static IP addresses instead of DHCP assigned IP addresses. So let's wait for the host to boot. And now that the host is booted, we can see the Direct Console user interface. And notice down on the bottom it says that if we want to do customization we need to hit function key 2. So I'll type function key 2. Uh, incidentally, if you ever come to this screen and instead of being the, the yellow and gray that you see here, if it's just an entirely gray screen, that means that the DCUI is sleeping. If you just hit a key it'll wake back up. So I'm going to hit F2 to continue. I need to authenticate to the root account, so I'm going to type it's already typed root for me, but I'm going to type the root password, VMware1Bang. Again, that's capital V, capital M, where1Bang. And I'll hit enter to continue. And a few moments later, we're on the configuration screen. And what we want to do is scroll down using arrow keys to configure management network. And hit enter. Then under IP configuration, so we scroll down. We're going to select IP configuration. And instead of using DHCP, we're going to hit the down arrow key followed by the space bar to specify that we want a statically assigned IP address. And the IP address that we want is not 172.16.245.130. We want .101. Again, in a previous video, I explained how I selected that IP address for my first host. The net mask here looks great. And we're going to choose OK by hitting Enter. Next, we're going to go to IPv6 and hit Enter. Uh, rephrase that. We're not going to go to IPv6. We're not configuring IPv6. We're going to go to DNS, and we will hit Enter. And under DNS, um, the IP address that you see here is the IP address that Fusion handed out by default. But you'll recall in the third video of this very video series, we set up a DNS server on Dot one. Now, if you happen to have taken a different technique, um, your DNS server may be on a completely different IP address. Uh, so what it, wherever your DNS server is, type its IP address here. And if you happen to have multiple DNS servers, you could type uh, the second IP address here. I don't have two, so I'll leave this field blank. But what I am going to do is change the host name from localhost to ESXi01. And then I'll hit Enter to continue. I'll scroll down to custom DNS suffixes and hit enter. 
And our suffix for this lab environment, for, for my lab environment, is vvork.info. Your domain name is uh, going to be something different. So I've typed my domain name. I'll hit enter to continue. And we're back on the uh, network configuration screen. I'm going to hit escape to go back one level. It asked me to confirm, do I want to make the changes that I specified? I'm going to type the letter Y to continue. And we're back on the main screen. Now, you don't have to do this next part, but I think it's a good idea. I'm going to scroll down to Test Management Network and hit Enter. And notice that um, the management test will allow us to uh, ping various IP addresses. This first IP address is the IP address of the router in my environment. The second IP address, you'll recall, is the IP address of my DNS server. I could add a third one. For instance, if you plan on having these hosts connected to the outside world, you might want to ping a router that's further downstream. And then for resolve hostname, I'm not going to look up esxi01.local domain. That's not my domain. Instead, I'm going to search for esxi01.vvork.info. And so we're going to perform three different tests. I'll hit Enter to continue. And you can see it's going through the tests. It pinged the first IP address successfully, the second IP address successfully, and it's been able to successfully do a FQDN forward lookup of the machine name esxi01.vvork.info. So it looks like our first virtual ESXi host is set up entirely correctly. I'm going to hit OK to continue. I'll hit Escape to get out of the configuration screen. And as you can see, I'm back on the main screen. Now there's one little tiny, 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 tiny um, piece of uh, cleanup work that I'm going to do. I'm going to type Control Command. Excuse me. I'm going to type Shift Command L. That uh, didn't work. Uh, oh, 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 oh! I need to teach you this anyways. Um, remember how we clicked in the, the 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 console window here to get keyboard focus in the window. To get keyboard focus back, you need to type Control command key at the same time. So now that I've typed control command, if I type shift command L, here's the virtual machine library thing again. And while it might look like the VM that we just created is already in the folder that we created, it's actually not. So I'm going to drag and drop the VM into the folder. I can tell it's in the folder now because of this indentation. So there you have it. That's the installation of our first virtual ESXi host. Do go ahead and take a look at the next video because in there we'll show you how to install the second virtual ESXi host, pointing out the places where there are differences between the installation of the second host versus this, the first host. So see you in the next video.